Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Peer. This is our November edition of Charlotte Street's Artist Spotlight, where Charlotte Street, based here in Kansas City, Missouri, it's a nonprofit. We uh, are just keeping our ears and eyes open to the arts community, being responsive to what's going on, uh, trying to with programs and whatnot. And Peer is one of those. And so this is an opportunity to connect artists in our community who might not be on each other's radar. Uh, Potentially are working maybe in similar fashions, and uh, but also different points in their careers. So established mid career or just you know up and coming emerging. So we've got three exciting ones. We pair them each month, and this one we have Lily Mueller, and we have Armin Usum and Craig Augie. So with that, we're going to get going very quickly. They each have a five minute presentation that they've created ahead of time. So we'll play those and you'll hear a little commentary. And then following that, we'll have a little conversation with the three artists just to see if they have any input or questions for each other. So again, thank you all. And we'll get started first with Lily Mueller. Hi there, thanks for tuning in. My name is Lily Mueller, and today I will be sharing a little bit about my art practice. I was born and raised in Kansas City, Missouri, and then attended the Kansas City Art Institute, leading me to graduate with a BFA in fiber. I chose fiber as my major, thinking my focus would be on garment construction. That changed once I took the quilting elective, which led my practice in a completely different direction. Quilting intrigued me because it was a new method of creating a graphic composition where I could continue to play with color. There was something therapeutic about dyeing fabric cutting it and piecing it back together. This piece titled Down the Rabbit Hole was one of my very first quilts. I wanted to make something overwhelmingly large and colorful, causing the viewer to feel as if they were transported into another world. Much of my inspiration for that quilt came from my love for psychedelia. Ever since I was little, I've loved the bright colors, music, band posters, and optical illusions that contributed to the late 60s and 70s. I remember one of my very first psychedelic inspirations was the Beatles' Yellow Submarine animation. I loved the visual overload of flickering colors and shapes with the music. It created this sensory overload that was so overwhelming yet exciting at the same time. The more I quilted, the more I realized how perfectly it fell into place with other parts of my practice. I've always loved to draw, and that was something I felt like I abandoned once I started quilting. For some reason, I thought it had to be one or the other. Little did I know, they would work so well together in my practice. Starting to draw again gave me more wiggle room to plan out my ideas until I'd reached the final design. This also caused me to start saving every drawing I made. Even if it wasn't a finished drawing, I knew that there was something I could always pull from it. The work on the left was part of what helped me realize I needed to keep drawing. This piece was just a small paper and marker collage I made at the beginning of my senior year. It sat on my desk for so long that one day I just thought to myself, hey, that might make a fun quilt. The process of turning it into a quilt was so exciting and challenging because I was able to translate the drawing in whatever way I wanted. This meant picking out the different textures and fabrics that brought a new level of variety into my practice. Using different fabrics such as silk and velvet added a new layer of dimension to my work. I've always been attracted to very graphic work with saturated colors and high contrast. Texture was something I didn't put much thought into until I started using these new fabrics. One of my favorite parts of my process is getting to decide what color will be what texture. I try to account for the way the color will reflect and how each particular color will dye with certain types of fabric. This next piece is titled Sailing to the Sun. With my new love for texture, 
I wanted to circle back and make something that was nostalgic to me. As I mentioned before, I've always loved the Yellow Submarine animation. It was one of my favorite childhood hobbies and a great memory that will always remind me of my family. The name Sailing to the Sun came from the lyrics of Yellow Submarine. Through color choice and composition, this piece reminded me of the animation. Its strong and vivid colors remind me of the sun, while elements of perspective make it feel like you're moving towards the center of the piece. While keeping my focus on quilting, I kept exploring other ways of being creative. I had a lot of free time during quarantine, so I decided to try some new ways of documenting my work. Much of my design comes off as very playful, and I wanted to focus on expanding that. I started to experiment with Photoshop and different background colors while adding silly elements to the documentation. Doing this really made me think about how my work looks incorporated with other things instead of just being on a white gallery wall. My documentation process started to turn into a collaboration between my work and furniture that I liked. I started to have so much fun putting things together to make an aesthetically pleasing composition. Incorporating my work with objects and interior spaces is something I am still working towards. I want my work to be an experience in itself, so I tried to pull from all surroundings to complement the work. There is still a lot to be done in terms of improving my documentation, but I'm excited to move forward with the ideas I have. One of my greatest fears as an artist is to get stuck making the same work over and over again. My goal is to keep trying new things regardless of how successful it is. Right now, I am introducing painting back into my practice. I'm really enjoying how it can relate to drawing and quilting. On December 3rd, I will be showing both quilts and paintings at Kansas City Artist Coalition. If you're free, I'd love to see you there. But for now, thanks so much for tuning into my presentation. Awesome, thank you, Lily. All right, next up, we're gonna go with Carmen. The image on the right represents my previous narrative work. The painting on the left is a kind of summation of my new aesthetic. The pared down abstract shape is self-sufficient and needs no narrative. Its presence becomes the only content, which is the aura created by the form. Contrary to what I believed when I was doing the previous work, art has no political usefulness. If it is used to achieve political ends, it becomes a tool for advancing an ideology. Art and life are two separate things. I'm interested in how a society prompts an artist to do what he does. And I like to draw comparisons between different eras in history and what kinds of visual languages the different historical developments provoked. These paintings are about that, about time and the passage of time and the various constructions of realities that artists in their time have produced, and still produce, obviously, just as my paintings are constructions, literally and figuratively speaking. My process is reliant on collage. The collage embodies this idea of the construction of a reality, not the reality, but a reality. I find it significant that constructivism isn't just a movement that sprung up in the wake of a world war as an attempt to create a new world, but that it is also a school, if you will, of philosophy. The idea that, as humans, we have no direct access to what one might call external reality, that whatever we perceive is not direct, but is filtered through how our minds construct the world. That's what I mean when I said painted forms that look like they're collaged in front of a painted representation of the natural world, the external reality. My paintings attempt to visualize the paradox of Western society's total dilemma and contradiction. 
We are constantly torn between our animal natures and the data our rational pursuits such as science and technology provide us with. I think the collage is a perfect emblem of this reality construction and its pitfalls. This is my studio in the West Bottoms. I draw and collage constantly. I might generate two or three compositional ideas per day, then I paint on the canvases in progress, and then I even might do some more compositional ideas. I enjoy this playful, spontaneous exploration, sometimes more than working on the canvases. But it's not an either-or. The process is organically both. I am drawn to the languages of architecture, both its realizations of ideas, as well as its creating actual spaces out of an expansion of sculptural processes. But I am a painter, and one trained in representational art at that, and so I have the additional option to create illusions of actual architecture. The make-believe of illusionistic art is the perfect foil to play around with this concept of construction, the putting together of something the assembly of something, the sampling. This is a project I did with Caleb Taylor, a studio maid and a close friend. We were invited by the Goethe pop-up in Kansas City to create a site-specific mural and installation during the centennial of the Bauhaus in 2019. The Bauhaus was a revolutionary art school that did not want to be an art school, but a sort of think tank where people learned how to transform society through aesthetics, the construction of a new world, a new reality. These are two compositions that deal with what I just said, but one has to keep in mind that an image is always more than words can encompass. Words, spoken or written language, as versatile as they are, always fall short and sometimes even get in the way of accessing a visual object. I am fascinated by that, still, after a lifetime of painting and writing. Next are examples of the most recent developments in the studio. I'm playing around with some new approaches increased flatness, or at least a reduction of illusionistic tricks, but also a reduction in the saturation of the colors, as evidenced in the right image. Another thing I've become interested in lately is a monochromatic approach to painting, or nearly so. I flirted with that briefly last year, but I've realized it's something I should pursue in earnest, at least parallel to the more colorful paintings that I continue doing. Awesome. Thank you so much for that one. All right. And then Craig is up next, and we're going to do a live presentation here. So let me get this ready here. Hi. So I'm showing work side by side here uh, in conversation, not necessarily more than the same time of making so that we can see the relationships between different modes, mediums, and times. Ultimately, my work explores relationships between old and new, between material and gesture, between memory and forgetting. Collage, sculpture, bookmaking, and textiles merge and present aspects of journaling, material notations. I think of my work sort of as future relics, a hybrid of natural and artificial, the patina and weather and age of unindustrial un elements composed with newer, shinier materials like leather or plastic. But my focus is always reclaimed, recycled and salvaged. I love mining, collecting, and I'm always on the hunt for parts out in the wild, so to speak. I think at heart, I'm really a designer, but also forever a poet. I'm always trying to distill a sort of poem in these assemblages by distorting craft traditions and constructing or deconstructing abstract language, but with a vocabulary understood intuitively by using common materials and low-tech process. 
my work approach is very improvisational. It all sort of starts with what happens if I put this with that? And then I let the materials guide me. I also like to set up little arbitrary limitations as with these limiting the number of components to wrangle my maximalist nature into a minimal sensibility. Lately, I'm trying not so much to alter the individual parts of the work, but by their proximity or conglomeration, hopefully some kind of alchemy occurs in the eye, in the mind. With Harold here from Deadbolts and a lone zone drifter, part of an elsewhere museum residency project, both site specific and temporary, sculptures are envisioned as both esoteric message and mannequin messenger. Another from Deadbolts last year, A Feeling That Lies, with additions here by Andrew Ordonez, and Fool's Plaid, Ravel and Un, currently with other works at Zona Rosa via Arts KC now showing. I am informed by the aesthetics of Appalachia, where I grew up, and the robust DIY punk scene that existed in my hometown. I'm always searching for the emotional resonance behind my influences and memories trying to create visual vibrations that may stimulate deeper deja vu. Variations of torn or exploded textiles and objects floating through grid forms or void spaces are reflected in both collage and sculpture. With these works, which I loosely refer to as drifters, I'm, learn I'm leaning into the unease, the confusion, even as I hope the joy of experimentation is perceptible. I'm interested in how the grid acts as simile for social or cultural structures, Ribbons, cut leather or wire could all be aspects of self, of us, navigating this rigid architecture. So many of us have felt as though we were caught drifting through life recently, but are we fighting the grid or dancing with it? And how are we all connected? I'm perpetually taking inspiration from 80s deco, 90s pop culture, abandoned malls, and think about how we display art and how that can be disrupted. So vintage retail components are used and fashion or consumerism are subtly referenced. Often I am visualizing the rhythms of electronic music and jazz in the studio, and I'm thinking about the poetics, the struggles and joys of my queer experience, of recovery, of the environment, et cetera, as I dance my way through visual problem solving. On some minor level, my assemblages allow me to actually shift reality by re-engaging shapes, patterns, and materials. Here are two works from last Sunday's Site One in Gillum Park, uh, coming up right, right here. A one day collaborative show. I have been exploring planar assemblage through an ongoing series called Gloaming, where a reworking of studio components are activated by a particular site. And it creates a surprise encounter with art. So this event was a natural fit. I say a piece is, quote, finished when I stop. Therefore, works and materials are subject to reworking and multiple variations. Here are two more that are very new, continuing to investigate a sort of coded calligraphy that develops through gesture of objects with elements that are at once playful, nostalgic, and loaded with the tensity of present and the uncertainty of the future. You can see these and several others in Primer, opening at Troost Gardens this Saturday from 4 to 6. If you want to view more, you can check out the website or my IG. And I, I'm always up for chats and visits, so please reach out. Thanks. Fantastic job, all of you. Thank you so much. Um, like I said, we'll, we'll start this with a little conversation. I'll kick it off. but. Um, I don't think the three of you really know each other personally, but maybe just know their work. And the cool thing is all three of these artists are showing currently. Um, Armin's at the, at the downtown Kansas City, Missouri Library. Craig at the um, Truce Gardens opens up. And then Lily will have a show at the uh, KCAC, the Kansas City Artist Coalition. So lots of good, it's good to see that art is getting up outside and inside and all that. Uh, I had one quick question maybe for Armin, uh, I was curious if music plays much into your art making. I was noticing, you know, with the other two, how there is that. But I know that Armin comes to a lot of shows and is always sketching and whatnot, but maybe different kinds of styles. I'd just be curious if, if music or audio sound has anything in your work. And it doesn't have to be too detailed. <laughs> I listen to music when I make art, but but music plays very little um, 
has very little influence on my art as such. Um, that the influences for my work are history, philosophy, so ideas, uh, ideas, not sound. Gotcha. That's, that's great. Um, with Craig, I was also kind of curious in your approach of making that. Is your collages, would you consider those like your drawings in a sense of like in a sketchbook sort of fashion, the same way like they're working? Yeah, I, I kind of do, especially recently. I mean, I, I kind of feel like I, I'm sort of a collageist at heart. You know, I, I guess like my, my background <laughs> per se is kind of like rooted in collage. But especially in the last couple of years, like probably during the quarantine, I sort of returned to collage in a, in a drawing, in a kind of way that I'm, I might also return to, to drawing in a sketchbook. And that's really become sort of the way to explore concepts. And then I definitely have been trying more consciously to translate my collages into three-dimensional works. And I never really made, the, made that connection before. It was either, I was always either doing collage and that was it, or I did collage sometimes and did other things other times, but I definitely am using collage as a, in a sort of sketchbook way um, now. Got you. That's very nice. And then Lily, with you being a recent graduate and um, kind of trying to figure out the studio practice after getting away from the forced one, um, you know, I think you're figuring out some of these things that you can do either or, or they can be the same kind of how Armin approached. And I'd just be curious um, how that's going for you as you're incorporating more of those collages with the paint into that part. Is it really mixing together? <laughs> Yeah, um, I I feel like it's been a lot more challenging, like out of school to find new ways um, to challenge myself and my practice. Um, and so I'm just trying things and, you know, like maybe I'll have like small crits with my friends or whatnot, but there's not like always somebody readily available like there is at school to be like, hey, like I think this is working or this isn't. Um, but it's sort of fun because it's kind of just like no one's influencing you. You're just trying new things. So yeah, I've, I've been having a lot of fun with it. Nice. Armin, I know you're very prolific um, and have lots of shows coming up. Um, I'm curious, you're also an instructor as a teacher, and I'd just be curious your thoughts of seeing the other slideshows. Um, so have you noticed any similarities or had any questions or anything about how they're approaching their art making? I, I was struck by um, the, the, the two approaches to collage that Either Lily or Craig have, so I, I would I would pose this question to Lily first. Um, do you do you do, do you see your quilts as collages or or do you see them as sculptures? I I think it depends on the quilt. Um, as of recently, I kind of feel like it's more of a collage because I've also been um, doing some applique on top of my quilting, which like isn't like in the piecing, if that's the best way I can describe it. It's kind of like on top, more like collage. Um, and I definitely really want to expand the materials that I'm using as well. So I'm super interested in that and not really interested in functional quilts or like traditional quilts. Um, but yeah, I think I am sort of kind of leaning in more of a direction to where I'm thinking about them as collage work. And, and Craig, do, do, your, do your constructions ever make it back into two-dimensional work? Like do, do you do you translate your your three D constructions back into into two dimensional work? Yeah, that's a great question because I, I didn't I chose sort of not really to put any two D work in those slides. Absolutely, it could have been all relationships between 
and I think like something's happened in the last that there's sort of more of like an open channel back and forth between, between things like I think I definitely approach my instructions from from sort of like a collage technique you know for example sort of you know, general specific you know kind of starting big and getting in sports. um but yeah I mean absolutely I've I've back to where I experiment with something and then um, it sparks an idea for a or I have, you know, how we all, I'm sure, kind of pick up on little sessions of a, of a, a aesthetic or a little visual view or something um, that we tune into some frequency and it's just like only able to do, do it as a collage in, if I'm struck by something at home or something, you know, I'm open, I'm open to kind of, uh, shifting back and forth. I think it, it seems to happen quite freely now uh, where I, maybe before I thought it, it had to be one or the other. And it's kind of like, you know, collages, actual collage makes that make, make their way into a construction too, or, you know, collage now to me means not just paper. It could mean fabric, it could mean wood. It could, you know, so there's, there's some like boundary blurring that happens there too with like what even is a collage <laughs> anymore. And and are the books that you're making are they are they documentations or do you see the book also as a three dimensional object? I see the, I see my books more as sculptures themselves that are that are um, that always usually contain some element of collage. So I think of the books more as three three D collage. <laughs> I guess you could say put it that way. Mm -hmm. Lily, did you have any questions for Armin or, you know, or, or Craig, obviously? Sorry, I'm being quiet. <laughs> ah, that's um, well, I think it was just, I think it was really interesting, um, Craig, what you were just saying about, um, well, this was a little bit ago, you were kind of talking about sort of translating the two-dimensional works to three-dimensional. Um, and that's kind of something like, that I've always struggled with personally. Um, so it's neat to see you doing that. I guess just a comment. Yeah, that's cool. Opinion, but how about you, yeah. Craig? Anything? Questions for any of them? Well, uh, one kind of, uh, I just, yeah, I just think it's, it's cool. I, I find, I just find a lot of connections, you know, with just sort of how our, our vocabulary, so to speak, and kind of, um, just sort of digging into that, how we all kind of are, are kind of digging into this the very idea of visual language. I, I find that to be fascinating, you know, kind of really thinking about what does that even mean? Not, not kind of just tuning into um, the lineage of a certain sort of vocabulary, abstract vocabulary, but actually kind of trying to deconstruct it. I think we're all kind of doing that. And I would say, I just was thinking too, um, you know, um, maybe even though Armin is not necessarily, um, uh, uh, influenced per se by any particular music, I feel like we all, uh, I see there, I see the rhythm in that. And um, I, in your work, and I, I also just kind of a funny comment, but I feel like we all would be great on like an album cover uh, sometimes. I so agree. That's a bucket list item for me. I, yes. I'm going to put that out there also, but I could but. see any, I could see any one of us is as a great uh, album cover for any number of uh, musicians. <laughs> I'll, I'll go totally... one over. I'll go one over because I said I I could see the three of you as a collaboration, kind of what Armin and Caleb did with taking on a three D objects and how you could make your collages into things, but yeah. they're on casters where you could move around this whole gallery of pieces, and each of you kind of your approaches to it could be really interesting. Yeah, I'll go even further. Okay. I would love that. And, let's hey, do it I, i'm here right, for that. Take, right here right now declare uh, yeah. <laughs> open. yeah armin i was surprised when you said that uh like that i you said you listen to music when you're working but that it doesn't have much of an influence on like the work itself correct me if i am misunderstood but that's no i said that yes you what sorry you you paraphrase me right yes I, <laughs> yeah it, I, because I, I see, so, I see so much movement in the work and like 
I don't know when I'm, I guess, I don't know. Sometimes I think of a composition as a song, you know, and like, or a story, which is kind of more relative to you, I think. But. Oh yeah, the, of course, there, there are parallel um, ways of arranging. I mean, in, in the case of music, um, sounds are arranged and in the case of visual mm -hmm. art, uh, shapes and colors and lines are arranged. Um, but, but it's, I mean, there, there are artists who, who literally react to music um, and, and that's what I meant when I said music has little influence on my work. But uh, in um, following what Craig said, actually in my show at the library, uh, there, are, there is a vitrine and in that vitrine is an album cover. <laughs> one, one of my collages has become an album cover. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. That's a win. That's good. Awesome. Well, that's why I like these conversations. Um, just, you know, kind of hopefully you all will continue it, find each other in the social worlds or come out to each other's shows or do a studio visit. You all have studios that would, I think would be great. Um, get that. And I'd uh, love to see you all around more at the Charlotte Street as things are opening up. Um, Craig's a resident, so it's pleasure to see him a lot but um good luck with all of your shows and thank you for being a part of this and um, keep just doing the great things you're doing so thank you all and like i said this will be posted on youtube we'll clean it up a little bit and this will be on our youtube channel so you can share this with others as well um have a great thanksgiving and we will see you next month thank you all thanks pat thank, thank you, you. Uh, bye. bye 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 thank you